Welcome back to Late Night Gamer. I'm in a wow this year that 2016 will be the year that I learned to play ASL, the Advanced Squad Leader. So I bought the rulebook and I'm waiting some modules. They're in the mail. Well, as you can see, this one is quite substantial and you probably know this already. So let's start off um, a little bit easier. Let's start with the starter kit. And this is starter kit number one. So the starter kits will take you from this rulebook to this rulebook. Well, more or less, this is just for inf infantry uh, because the starter kit number one is just about infantry. So these are all the rules for the starter kits infantry, and it's not that's not a lot. It's like how many pages? Mm, well, it's not many pages. There's no index here, but I don't know one to ten pages, perhaps. And while the ASL rulebook is thick. So let's put the rulebook aside for now. Perhaps we'll see it later some someday. And focus on the star kit number one. So the star kit one will give you uh, map boards, two map boards. To set up the game on. Also come with a rule book that we have briefly seen already. There's a reference sheet for the tables. We will go more into that when we start playing. And you get scenarios. Uh, six scenarios, double-sided scenario cards, which tell you how to set up the different scenarios, the wind conditions, and so forth. And of course you get the counters. Let's have a closer look on the scenario. So I'm showing scenario one here, retaking Veerville, just to show you how the card is built up. There's a historical description and a picture. Um, and it also tells you which map board. Then you will have some information about rounds. Um, the Americans set up first, the German move first. In the turn record and you will play five turns and then until the end and lastly it will tell, tell you the forces and if there are any special rules in play it's down here uh, the forces the american forces and the german forces and the reinforcements so it's quite simple once you get to know know it um, the thing is with this game there's a lot of abbreviations so you need to learn the abbreviations which is not really a problem but it can be confusing when you start uh, i forgot to mention it also is an aftermath where the scenario will tell you what really happened. Right, so uh, so let's choose a scenario to play. Uh, let's have a quick look at retaking Virville and the forces. We see that it's only infantry. And in the, the Starter Kit 1, it's only infantry. If you want to advance to Starter Kit 2, you will get guns. Um, and in Starter Kit 3, there will be tanks and vehicles. In Starter Kit 1, it's only infantry. So you can see here it's a very it's not a very complex setup. Alright, scenario number two. Let's skip Weirville because it's only infantry. Well it's only infantry in the game, but it's only there's they don't have any equipment, right? So let's have a look at War of the Rats, scenario number two. So this is Stalingrad in September 1942. So you see the scenario sort of jumps back and forth. It doesn't follow a campaign mode. So the War of the Rats describe uh, the initial battles of Stalingrad, where uh, the army commander Paolo sent in a small force or a smaller force trying to capture the city, but the Russians fought back. And then the Germans realized that this is going to be a long, long battle. They called it Rattenkrieg, the War of the Rats. So we're going to play a piece of that war, <laughs> a piece, a piece of uh, of the War of the Rats, of the Rattenkrieg. Obviously, we'll have the Russians. And they are going to be set up on the map and they are carrying some light machine guns and some medium machine guns. 
So they have some support weapons in addition to their normal squads of men. And the Germans, they are coming on. And you can see that they are carrying some demolition charges, two demolition charges. They have flamethrowers, one flamethrower. They have light machine gun and medium machine gun. And they are elite forces. The Germans are elite forces. That's the E in circle E here. It means that they are they are uh, they are quite tough. Um, they also have some first line infantry, which is the second best you can have, of course. Well, the Russians will be fighting with mainly first line infantry and conscripts. Much poorer quality infantry. Uh, no, we are going to use map port Z, and they're going to put the map in this orientation with the set to the left bottom left corner so we take the map with the set down in the left corner and it says only hex rows A to P are playable and that is the red portion of the map which we're going to play on because we'll have a look at the map we have set down here we have hex rows A this is A and this is B C and we'll play down to P, which is here. So this is the city we're going to to enter. This is Stalingrad, I guess. For this for this scenario at least, this is Stalingrad. Okay. Meet the men. So I picked out the counters that we are going to need. Okay, so here we see a squad, full squad of German elite units. And well, I know it's a full squad because it has a picture of three guys there, as opposed to half squads, which are two guys. So, two half squads make up a full squad. Well, this is a bad example because this full squad is elite and these guys are conscripts and these are first line units. So, make sure you pick the right ones. They have different values. So, it's important that you pick the right one. Let's move off the half squads. They are not going to be part of this game, at least not yet. So the numbers that we can see here on the counter um, is really the firepower, the range of, of the, the firepower, or the range of the unit, and the morale, which is important if they get fired upon. ASL is known for its uh, vast abundance of counters and its extreme detail. And the study kit also have a lot of counters, and you can see here, this is an example of two German units, schools, both are elite units, but the numbers are different. So the first one has a firepower of 5, while the second has a firepower of 4. And actually, when you look at it, uh, look at the counters, you can see that these guys with a lesser firepower, but the greater range, has rifles. You can see the last guy there he has a rifle, while here they have submachine guns. And then you have half squads, counters for half squads, so that these can get reduced. And these as well, and you have first liners and conscripts and green units, second line units, and then you have vehicles. So you understand the need for, for counters, or the, the amount of counters that you're, you're going to need for the units is, is, is great. So we need to have some way of organizing them. Well, that's a science of its own, I'm not going to go into that now. But we are going to use these elite units, circle the elite units with machine guns. So the number also has a small superscript number, so it means that these guys can fire smoke. And they have to roll one die and beat that number in order to be successful. So that's a two, so yeah, it's not it's not a well it's one third of a chance to be able to, to lay smoke when they try to. The firepower is also, has also an underline, which means that they can assault fire. That will make meaning when we play, I hope. Um, the range also is underlined. It doesn't have a meaning in the starter kits, but it, do in, it does in full ASL, so we're going to skip that. And then it's the morale at the, at the, the last, last number. So let's compare it to a Russian that we're going to face. These are the best Russian units that are going to be on the map, I think. Well, they have some first liners also with, with machine guns. But these are first liners um, with rifles. Firepower 4, range 4, morale 7. So the morale is lower. You can see that the firepower is lower. The range is about the same. 
so it's a lesser quality unit but most notably we see that there is no superscript number here the Russians cannot fire smoke and no Russian units as far as I know can fire smoke let's set these guys up on the map the um, the uh, scenarios sheet says that Russians set up first right so let's set up the Russians and there are instructions for doing that on the scenario sheet as well and these are elements of the 62nd army they need to set up south of hex grain a9 k4 p4 right i hope the glare is not too troublesome but i took out some of these uh, plastic crosses that i have they are really tie laying crosses Brought from a, bought from a hardware store uh, and I indicated the, the, uh, the hexes so I have to set up south of these and north is up on the map as personal instructions so it means that I will set up within the city here with the Russians so by the end of the game the Germans will win if they control buildings F8 L6 O6 right so these three buildings the Germans control any of these buildings? No, they have to control all of these buildings. They will win the game, so I will stop them and I will probably then set up uh, around these buildings. I know that the Germans will be coming from the north and they will be set up north of this, ex this same this same hex lines that, that I put up here. So they will be setting up somewhere here. Um, so let's see what I can do with the Russians to protect the area. I need to think a little bit. Right, so in this house I have three squads, conscript squads. Mm. Manning, a medium machine gun. And the medium machine gun has a firepower of 4 and a range of 10. There's a number there, a breakage number. It says B11, it means that if I roll 11 or more on two dice, this will break. It also has five portage points, meaning that uh, it's a well, the more portage points, PPs, the, more hev the heavier it is, and each squad can carry three PP when they move. Uh, the leader will help carry one, but this is uh, this is uh, this is heavy, and unless they move, but unless they move, this is not going to be a problem, of course. Furthermore, I have two single units down here. I have a stack here with first liners, and they are carrying some light machine guns. And also have a stack here protecting the last building, conscripts with light machine gun. Okay, so this is my main fire. This is my main firepower unit. So I've set up the Germans like these in three stacks. All the stacks, all the uh, units are being led by a leader, which is important. I will see that a little bit later. Then start playing. Up here I have first liners with a light machine gun. Down here, also first liners and light machine gun. This is a little bit of both, it's first liners with a light machine gun and some elite units carrying a medium machine gun. So this is a heavy firepower unit. Oh. And lastly I have my elites and my best leader here with flamethrowers. And demolition charges. Poor Russians. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll move these crosses here now. And move the crosses, and we can start with the Germans' first turn. Oh, yeah, the German move first. Germans move first.